now do. The British pub. Today it's all gastro pubs, food, beer gardens, fun for all the family, music festivals, and so on. And in a few places you'll still find the traditional pub with the fruit machine. Um, you don't see arcade games in pubs anymore, but you might still see a pool table and uh, things like that. So today I thought we'd look at five computer games that try to replicate the pub gaming experience, the British pub gaming experience. And we're going to start off with Pub Trivia Simulator by Codemasters, because a big thing back in the day, and still as you've seen in a few places, are the quiz machines in pubs where you could win a few quid. Even the official Radio 1 quiz machines uh, give us a break with DLT and the... Uh, there, was also, there, was also, was there was also a Top of the Pops one. Anyway, Pub Trivia Simulator by Codemasters, and we're on the ST, tries to emulate that and you have to answer questions and pick cards in different subjects. So we're going to pick a subject. It's a music question. We get 100 points. Which band is Paul Weller a member of? Of course, it's the Style Council. And of course, the game being from 1990, all the questions are, well, dated to 1990. Showbiz question, 150 points. In which seaside town is 40 towers? So everyone knows that. It's Torquay. C64 version is much the same. Well, there's not a lot of stress on the systems for these, is there? Tenko. It is Japan. Well, uh, well, well, yeah, okay. Technical, we could kind of argue over that. Which, which series of Tenko? The aim is when you get to the top of each screen on the Spectrum version, now you will be given some money and you get to progress through the game. Who is Doctor Who's robot dog? Oh, which animals? Well, I've answered it anyway. The only thing is, with the game here, is one long answer, and it's game over at this early stage, and it already becomes quite hard with quite harsh time limits. If your late 80s trivia is up to scratch, then you may find Pub Trivia Simulator a fun game. However, with the fact you have no lives in effect and you can be kicked out of the game just for getting one wrong answer, I think the game has limited appeal. And certainly I played this game as, one, as part of one of the Quattro compilations on the Amstrad and I found it more fun playing it in two-player mode than I did one. Think of this game as a time capsule. A trivia time capsule. Pool tables. Again, something you don't well, don't see as many of these in pubs these days as you used to. But Arcade Pool aims to emulate the pub pool experience, the pool hall experience in your home. Run this on my Amiga 1200 and it is quite, quite superb. I think it's one of the best pool games on any system. Yes, it's glossy, it has superb graphics and sound, but it has a myriad of gameplay options, and the balls are excellent to control, the physics are really good. Apparently there's a PC version, I believe, that has very dodgy ball physics, so you want to stick with that Amiga version. There's also a version of this given away with, I think, CU Amiga, which is basically the same game, but Snooker. However, Snooker's not really a pub game, is it? So... Arcade Pool is really where it's at. You can play against the computer, and the computer has a variety of players of differing abilities, all named after Amiga computer journalists. And because Team 17 aren't very keen on Amiga Power, all the Amiga Power journalists are the ones who are the weakest. I love the sampled sound effects. The ball effects really make it effective. And it's just great fun against the computer or against a friend in the tournament modes or single player modes. In all, Arcade Pool is simply the best pool game on any system of all time. It's brilliant. Darts. Again, a pub preserve. You don't see that much around these days. More working class 
pubs, more old-fashioned pubs, which is an enormous shame for because it's the it's the sport everyone can play. And 180 is a 1986 game by Mastertronic. We're starting off on the Spectre. I've viewed this on the channel before, as I have Arcade Paul. And look, there's Steve Pickford's hand. He That's his con contribution to the game. Famous 8-bit and famous computer graphics artist and general comic artist Steve Pickford, when he was on work experience at binary design, drew his own hand in this game. You play against the computer and you get to see a bar scene in the background on the spectrum. Things may go on, a dog can walk in, pints go down the bar. But it just generally adds to the atmosphere as well as a really rather nice 128k soundtrack. Over to the abstract version I had. Your hand can only move diagonally and you have to time it as where the hand is. As to how far the or how high the dart will go. If you score 100, you get an applause. If you get 180, you get some sampled speech. Just like that. Now we come to the 6502 versions because it's a different game here on the 64 and the Atari 8 bit as well. Come to that. It's not very good. The physics of the hand don't really work. It, it, I, I just can't get along with the C64 version at all. I think it looks ugly. I think the dark phone physics are all out and it just lacks that charm. And, and just the playability of the Spectrum, Amstrad and the version we didn't see, the MSX. So for 180, play it on the Z80 machines, run away from the 6502 versions. But what if you want the full Indoor League experience with Fred Truman? Indoor League was an ITV TV show shown during the day in the mid-1970s that showcased Northern Pub Sports. And look, we've got a lot of them here. We've got darts, we've got bar billiards, we've got dominoes, uh, table, football, pontoon, poker and skittles. Pub Games is a game by Alligator that has all these different sports in the game we're starting off on the cpc and this is table football and it's um yeah you know how these games are quite frantic and this is the c64 version when you play them in real life and uh, this has none of that over to the spectrum and if you have this game on tape then it's quite a frustrating multi-load because each separate game needs to be loaded in and look at this, this is the dart section of the game on the Spectrum. 180, it is not. Your cursor just jiggles around and you have to time it to hit the right area. 180 gets it so right on the controls, this does not. And this is the C64 dart section, which is um a bit more like 180, but played through a letterbox and two zoomed in and... Just generally quite annoying. I mean, how did that even happen? How did it hit the wire? I've got no idea. It's, uh, and now we're down here. Oh, this is terrible. Nothing touches 180 for darts. Wacky darts, perhaps, by Zeppelin. And this is the darts on the CPC, and uh, yeah, it's horrible. Still, we're getting all these different games for the price of one. And this is the Skittle section. Or Skittle Alley, because we've got to make clear it's not that Skittles where you have it on a string and swing the thing around. You know what I mean. The ball goes very slowly on the Amstrad. Over to the C64 for the Skittles. And it's a question of timing it. And it's actually a bit more like temping bowling on the on the 64. Yeah, it's um I've played Skittles in a pub and uh, it's not it's this is playing a bit more like temping bowling whereas a Skittles or a Skittle Alley isn't quite the same thing. 
Spectrum version. And there's no characters on the screen. The ball just moves back and forth. Bar billiards. So here's, here's a curious game. But I don't quite... I do kind of understand it. You basically have to... Two players and you have to hit the balls into the right holes whilst not, whilst not knocking over some kind of things on the table. It's quite good, but this gaming on the Amstrad is far, far too slow. Which is a shame. C64 version opts for a 3D view for the Barbillions, and you can actually see those three things that you don't need to lock over. They look like mushrooms on the table. Also, some card games in the compilation here. Compilation, the group of games. And you can play Pontoon and Poker. And frankly, I know nothing about card games, so I'm going to refrain from commenting Overall, we get quite a lot for your money. The problem is the individual games themselves aren't very good. Finally, what do you find in every pub, even today? Why? A fruit machine. And here's Super Nudge 2000 by Mastertronic. Although, clearly, it started off life on the C64 as a game called Fruit Bank. I know that because the menu system still calls it Fruit Bank. It's a very polished fruit machine on the 64. Now, if you watch my fruit machine simulator video, you know I have problems with fruit machine games on computers and it's a gateway into gambling and all that stuff. And I still have the same feelings here, but I felt we couldn't really do a pub game roundup without showing a fruit machine game. And this is what I had on the CPC. The C64 version looks really nice. It's polished. Um, it has all the features you would expect, and it's a whole league above Fruit Machine Simulator on the 64. So on the Spectrum, it's called Super Nudge 2000 on the menu screen, and we've inexplicably gained a fourth wheel. And this has the ring of a game where Mastertronic have been sent the C64 version, and then have had to get it onto the other systems, and I think... The Spectrum version here is probably another game that's been sent in at some stage that's just been rebranded into what they need for this release. The Amstrad version, Mastronic have had done by PAL Developments. And while it looks nice, it's incredibly slow. At least it only has three reels, though, which is a massive advantage over that bizarre Spectrum version. Looks nice, but it's all far too slow, and that C64 version has had so much more effort put into it, including a soundtrack by Maniacs of Noise. So that's five different pub-based games you can play on your home computer. Pub Trivia Simulator, well, it's an interesting time capsule for the time. You're going to have to have your 1989 knowledge head on when you come to play it. It's a little bit unforgiving, but if you like trivia, I think any of these versions, you'll find a, a sufficient challenge. But as I say, it's just a little bit harsh. Arcade pool is simply stunning. It's a wonderful pool game. Everyone needs to play this. It, it's really good. I just don't think it's been bettered on any system at all. 180 is also a definitive game. I, for me, it's the definitive darts game. Yes, it can be a little bit too easy once you get the hang of it. I absolutely love it, but it is the Z80 versions for me. I'm afraid those 6502 versions have got so many just little niggly things wrong with them that I just cannot get on with them. Pub Games by Alligator is an interesting experience. Uh, it's got so many different games built into it. Darts, bar billiards, dominoes, soccer, pontoon, poker and skittles. I don't think I've seen another Bar Billiards game on all well, the 8 bits, certainly, and probably not the 16 bits either. I could be wrong there unless we're counting PD games. So, from that aspect alone, that C64 Bar Billiards game is very, very interesting. But the darts are rubbish, the soccer game, the table football game is rubbish, the skittles are rubbish, and I can't really comment on Pontoon and Poker, but I'm guessing you can get better dedicated games. 
overall it's a game that seems to offer a lot of value but really there's not much of interest there super nudge 2000 very polished game on the 64 bit weird on the spectrum and just too slow on the cpc my usual caveats about fruit machine games apply now that's giving you a look around some pub case games on the 8 and 16 bits of course there's other games out there but until next time i'll see thee I'll sit there.